Hello there GCSEers and today is the first part of our second unit and in our second unit we're going to look at what Christians actually do. What do they do that shows that they are a Christian and the key thing to record in this one is we're going to be looking back at some of the beliefs and what Christians actually believe and the things that we looked in the first unit and show how these relate to their everyday lives. How do people be Christian? Now one of the first things that they do and one of the first things that show being a Christian is about prayer. And the key thing is is that when you want to keep up a relationship with anybody, we all communicate with them. So there's lots of ways people communicate, particularly in the modern world. They send each other electronic messages, put things online, all this kind of thing. Facebook's been a massive thing over the past sort of 20 years that people actually keep up with people who they wouldn't normally keep up with if that wasn't available. But normally if you want to keep a close relationship with someone then you talk to them whatever kind of relationship that is whether it's a parent child relationship or a teacher child relationship or any kind of relationship friendship mostly then people will have a good old chat they'll have a conversation and the key thing is that Christians believe that they do exactly the same with God when they pray they communicate via prayer now prayer is when Christians communicate with God either using a set prayer like the Our Father, which we've already looked at when we looked at the Trinity, the idea of calling God a Father, or informal prayer, where Christians actually will talk to God whenever, at any particular time of the day. For example, many Christians use the kind of prayer to give thanks for their food. You may remember one from First Call. Here's an example when Christians actually get together, they share a meal, and they may give thanks for their food. This is usually called the Grace Before Meals. Now, other people may give thanks for their meals in their own way. They may not use a formal prayer like the grace before meals. They may just give thanks off the top of their heads for the food that they're actually receiving. So that shows you how sometimes they, that prayer is formal and sometimes it's informal. Now, the two types of prayer, formal and informal, we're going to look at formal prayer in a minute. But quickly, we're going to look at informal prayer. And this will often be when a Christian is on their own, either in public, they may just be walking down the road and in prayer in their heads, or in private, and they may pray to maybe a crucifix or a cross or something like that. And usually it's to give thanks for things in their lives, or also to ask for God's help or advice or whatever it is that they need at that particular time. And often it's about asking God to guide them. And you remember from the first unit that we remember Jesus in Gethsemane, when Jesus actually himself asked for guidance from God the Father, okay, God the Son asking guidance from God the Father about what it is that he wants to do, you know, how he wants the cup of suffering to pass from him, but not his will, but God's will. Now, most of Christian prayer, much of Christian prayer, follows a formal process. Again, you may remember these prayers from your first school, particularly if it was a Christian school like St. Peter's. You may be able to recall some of the lines of the formal prayers that you may well have been taught. Now many of these prayers follow scripts from the Bible. For example, a Roman Catholic prayer called the Hail Mary, which has a line in it, Blessed are you amongst women. And of course it's a prayer to Mary. And this line, Blessed are you amongst women, comes from the conversation that Mary has with the angel Gabriel when the angel tells Mary that she will have Jesus and she will give birth to Jesus. Now, in another scriptural passage in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells people how to pray. He tells them not to show off, but to pray in secret. And when they do, he says that they must follow a particular order for their prayer. And this prayer, he tells them to say, has become known as the Our Father. And it's particularly important for Christians. And we're going to have a look at it in a bit more detail. Now, here's the prayer itself. It says, Our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen now we're going to go through each line and just see what it actually means and you know you, i'm sure that you can sort of guess some of them so this first line our father in heaven now don't forget the term Father reminds Christians that God who created the universe, who loves and cares for everybody, is God the Father. And the hour is a reminder that God's love holds no boundaries and that Christians are part of a community. And as a reminder, God is not a human father, but is an eternal father for the whole of mankind. 
the second line hallowed be thy name now hallowed be your name basically means that god's name must be treated with honor and respect must be hallowed your kingdom come the third line we looked at this in the belief section many christians believe that at the end of time that god's kingdom will come when the good will be split from the bad and will have a judgment day and god's kingship and authority will be recognized and accepted by all the fourth line your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and this one really is about the idea that christians want the created world to be follow god the father god the son god the holy spirit's rules give us today our daily bread the fifth line christians ask to give them and everyone what they need for that day including their spiritual and emotional as well as physical needs forgive us our sins we looked at this one the sixth line we looked at this one in the belief section and the idea of this of sin whether that be original sin or sins that christians do on a on a daily basis people are asking that they you know they, they're saying we fail and so we'd like you to forgive us please god as we forgive those who sin against us now again we've looked at this one when we looked at the story of the prodigal son about how the father was able to forgive the son the son who went away and that's really important for christians if they believe that they wish for their sins to be forgiven then they have a duty really to forgive other people's sins lead us not into temptation now they want their prayer a prayer is not to be tested beyond their powers to resist okay so they wish to ask god not to actually lead them into temptation to not do what they want but deliver us from evil now this again shows that god in the struggle against evil in the world and the christian is asking god to deliver them from evil to make sure that evil doesn't happen to them and the final line for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever again this reminds christians that they are able to show that god's rule is going to last forever and ever in his kingdom the afterlife is very important for them because god is omnipotent and ruler of all and finally the word amen and this is an important one it's a he it's a hebrew word that means so be it or as it is and christians end their prayer with this words to show they mean and agree with what it is that they say now finally i just want to bring you to the words of this woman here this woman here is called mother Teresa, and she used to say about prayer something that's particularly important particularly for roman catholics but other christians would agree with it as well she was a roman catholic nun who took prayer one step further her famous words were to work is to pray and to pray is to work and many christians believe that their life is a prayer it's a prayer to god that actually everything they do in their work in their worship life in everything that they do is a prayer to god for the benefit of others so ladies and gentlemen as you can see prayer of any kind is particularly important for christians today